वट इज ओम्स लॉ इन दिस लेक्चर आई विल टीच यू समथिंग वेरी स्पेशल अबाउट ओम्स लॉ विच अ लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल आर नीदर टीचिंग नॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो वॉच दिस लेक्चर टिल द एंड फर्स्टली लेट मी टीच यू वन रियल लाइफ एग्जाम्पल कंसिडर अ बॉल इट अ सर्टन हाइट अबाउ द ग्राउंड वेन वी रिलीज दिस बॉल इट एक्सेलरेट्स टूवर्ड्स द ग्राउंड नो हियर इज वन इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन वाई द बॉल एक्सेलरेट्स टूवर्ड्स द ग्राउंड well the answer is simple we all know that at this height the ball possesses high potential energy let it be 30 joule energy while at the ground the ball possesses low potential energy let it be 1 joule energy we say that the potential difference between this region and this region is 29 joule thus it is the potential difference due to which this ball moves towards the ground Remember that when this ball move from high potential region to low potential region it experiences air resistance i mean air resist the motion of the ball in opposite direction therefore it is universal fact that in gravitational field objects move from high potential region to low potential region in order to lower their energy similarly consider this electric field Let this is high potential region and this is low potential region. Now consider that I place a small test charge at high potential region. Let its energy is 25 joule. Now as usual the charged particle will move from high potential region to low potential region. Now at the low potential region let the energy of the charge is 5 joule. So the potential difference is 20 joule. thus it is the potential difference due to which this charged particle move from one region to another region therefore it is universal fact that an electric field charged particles also move from high potential region to low potential region in order to lower their energy now as we learned in the previous example that this ball experiences air resistance while moving from high potential region to low potential region similarly this charged particle also experiences resistance when it moves from high potential region to low potential region now listen carefully we all know that current is nothing but the net flow of charge per unit time here when this charged particle move from high potential region to low potential region we say that current is produced let me repeat it when this charged particle move from high potential region to low potential region we say that current is produced now if i ask you what is producing this current pause the video and think about it well the answer is simple it is potential difference that is producing the current let me repeat it it is potential difference that is producing the current remember that no potential difference means no current this noted down that potential difference always produces electric current now using this fact ohms baba states that current is directly proportional to the potential difference secondly ohms baba states that current is inversely proportional to the resistance when we combine these two equations we get i is equal to v upon r or v is equal to i into r personally i say very important res therefore we define ohms law as current flowing through a metallic conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference at constant physical state by physical state we mean constant length cross sectional area resistance and temperature if we change length cross sectional area and temperature current is no longer proportional to potential difference here let me teach you one important question how can we generate potential difference in electric circuit well using cell or battery we can easily generate potential difference for example this battery can generate 1.5 volt potential difference 
this battery can generate 4 volt potential difference and this battery can generate 8 volt potential difference. Also remember that this battery can produce maximum current because it has maximum potential difference. While this battery can produce minimum current because it has minimum potential difference. So note down all these important points. Now let me explain Ohm's law by real life example. For example, consider this electric circuit. Here, let the potential difference of the battery is 1.5 volt. We use the bulb as a resistor and its resistance is 3 ohm. When we switch on the circuit, we will observe that 0.5 ampere current pass through the circuit. Now I am going to use two batteries having 3 volt potential difference. I mean I double the potential difference. But I keep the resistance of resistor as 3 ohm. When I switch on the circuit, we will observe that 1 ampere current pass through the circuit. It shows that if we double the potential difference, electric current is doubled. Thus therefore we say that current is directly proportional to the applied force and Ohm's law is 100% right. Lastly, let me teach you one of my favorite questions. Which material follow Ohm's law? Well, only metallic conductors and their alloys follow Ohm's law like silver wire, copper wire, etc. Remember that Ohm's law cannot explain the behavior of current in semiconductor devices, diodes and transistors. Finally, one bonus question. Why filament bulb or LED do not follow Ohm's law? Well, it is because with the passage of time, the temperature of the filament increases due to which resistance also increases. Hence, the physical conditions no longer remain the same. Therefore, current is not directly proportional to potential difference. So, filament bulb and LED bulb do not follow Ohm's law. I hope that you have learned all about Ohm's law.